Hello and welcome to the Earthly Roots podcast where we chat all things gardening, homesteading and connecting to nature. We're your hosts Diane and Robin. The Earthly Roots podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. All right, it is sp- I don't want to ask start like that. Though. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How do we start? Uh, I think that's all right. All right. It is No, that doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it sounds weird. <laughs> Maybe this is the intro, all right? We're feeling awkward. It's been a while since we've recorded the last episode of the podcast. We've both been very busy doing lots of things. You've had a wedding on, which you looked beautiful for, by the way. Yeah, we've been going away and traveling and then coming back to what I feel like is like a lot of work right now with spring. I don't know, there's so much going on. I don't know about what you're up to but I am busy planting seeds I bet you would be like spring is here the rain's coming down the sun is blaring and you're a flower farmer now so your flowers would probably be blooming (laughs) yeah well I'm getting ready to yes so so many seeds like I pulled out my stash the other day Mm -hmm. and it was a bit messy and a bit overwhelming to kind of go through all of the seeds but I feel like that's everyone I don't know about you. With I think you're seeds. a bit of a hoard, though, yeah, you've said. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I do hoard a few seeds, but I'm trying to be better this time and focus more like from a business perspective. Mm. So I'm having to hold back. But, so what's, yeah. what's the difference between, let's say, like a home gardener planting flowers as opposed to a flower farmer planting them? Like what's yeah. the difference with sowing the well, seeds? Well, I suppose like it's – a bit more about money like Mm. I'm going to be wasting money if I'm just buying seed packets and thinking like oh yeah they look pretty and then not actually planting them and growing them the whole way through also I just don't have enough space to grow like every variety that I would like but uh, yeah I'm just having to hold back and step back a little bit Um, and yeah I feel like I've kind of not planted as many veggie seeds and I've seen yours that you've been planting (laughs) and I'm a little bit jealous so there's plenty yeah. to share, even if we end up with way more vegetables than you and you have beautiful flowers. If you bring me a bouquet, I'll give you some vegetables Definitely. in return. We can organize that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sounds good. But we have kind of jumped right in. Um, but I think it's important that we just mentioned that today's episode, we're going to talk all about springtime, mm-hmm. how our mood has shifted, what we're planting into the garden, um, what's changing, what we're noticing. So I yeah. think it's going to be a great conversation and just something to get our spirits lifted and get, get us excited. energized yeah, yeah, exactly. to get things going. Yeah. Oh, so where should we begin with springtime? I guess maybe mm. like how have you amended your soil mm-hmm. or possibly what are you doing or what had you done before springtime to get your yeah. soil and your gardens ready? Yeah, I think that's a good place to start because I feel like it's so easy to just jump the gun and just, you know, get right into planting. But I think remembering that everything comes from the soil and that's where all of the growth and nutrients is going to be coming from. So, yeah, going back to amendments is really important. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing exciting that I did get was my soil test results. So how did that go? Yeah, it it was interesting. (laughs) It was interesting. And I have like a little bit of a soil science background, but still not enough to like fully in interpret everything I'm still learning but um, yeah it was important for me to know what was um, like what the nutrients were for the flower farm so I went with DPI the Department of Primary Industries Mm -hmm. just like the like they do soil test kits and they send them out for free and then you send back and then you they, you get invoices. Um, that's not the point of this, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just a really good and easy way to do it because this is my first time getting a soil test. Yeah. But yeah, we have very acidic soils. Okay. So it was about like 5.5. Which is pretty normal considering all of mm. our natives really appreciate acidic soils, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just more so like ours is probably a little bit too acidic for some of the flowers to flourish Mm -hmm. because when you get lower on the acidity uh, which means the ph is lower and the more um, alkaline the higher the ph Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it just means that plants can't uptake certain nutrients when it's either side of neutral, which is seven. Okay. So we're going to have to add some amendments, add some phosphorus and sulfur, which mm-hmm. I'm still yet to figure out exactly what I'm going to be adding. So I don't want to say like, this is what you should do or, or whatever f- to add those things. But um, yeah, it was it was a learning experience. And interesting. Yeah, kind of interesting to to see all of the different micronutrients and things that are in soil that you really forget that plants need all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose one of the best things that you can do is add compost, which mm-hmm. I'm definitely doing. Um, I saw that you've got lots of wood chip around. And yes, well, it's that. actually leaf mulch. Okay. So Sam's found, and we have so many like wood chips and leaf mulches and all kinds of mulches uh, that mm. arborists or different people like they'll they'll process I guess a tree and then they'll leave the wood chips there for people to collect and in a way sometimes that can come with dangers of you don't really know what could have been sprayed or put onto the trees Mm. um, in the lead up to that happening but we've had good success so far and it's free so it's super efficient uh, not efficient it's free so it means that we can become frugal. Yeah. Uh, we don't good. have to go and buy it because it can be really expensive. Mm. Uh, we can put it in our pathways, which then suppresses all of the weeds and the grass within the pathways. Mm. And then um, we've started to, once it starts to decompose and break down, we've been putting that into our garden beds. Yeah, cool. And that's been really good. Um, so I've just got Sam getting me a supply <laughs> every nice. time it finishes. He goes and collects some more. Yeah, I need to get some of that. Our yeah. place is full of cardboard still. I need to get some something some to mulch. cover it up yeah 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 which we have I lots don't. of cardboard as well because that's the first step mm-hmm. but yeah it can look pretty uh pretty ugly uh, until yeah, you get it's something not nice aesthetic on it. <laughs> yeah we need some like flowers and stuff to you know mask that but which we'll eventually you will have yeah that's right it's still yeah. early days um we still have yeah. quite a bit of cold weather at the moment the soil hasn't yeah. warmed up and I think that's why it's so important to right now be focusing on soil health mm-hmm. and of adding mulch into your garden beds and really checking that everything is balanced before you start planting your seeds because mm-hmm. the soil isn't quite ready to take on those seedlings yet. And yeah. um, I know I personally have been planting a lot of seeds into the ground that are yet to come up yep. or haven't at all. Mm-hmm. Um, have you been planting anything into the ground that – has maybe taken off really well or a similar yeah. experience where it hasn't? Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I've been planting. I mean, I did plant my first tomato seeds the other day, which was mm. just like an experiment to see whether um, I had some random seeds that I had saved and completely like not labeled them properly. So it's going to be just a mystery. A yeah, yeah, but I thought I'd just use those to see uh, how quickly they germinate without any heat or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I just had them in like a mini greenhouse kind of thing which is just a old like container basically with a lid plastic yeah and it worked fine exactly and yeah they all sprouted really well so that is a good sign and they're growing really nicely Mm -hmm. with the overnight temperatures that we've been having so yeah that's one of them um have you planted them into the ground yet or are they still in the tray how long are you going to keep them there for yeah, I'll probably wait another few weeks mm-hmm. just to be certain. And they're growing really slow as yeah. well. So I'll probably transplant them um, when they start to get a few more true leaves. Yeah. And then because um, tomatoes are really great for transplanting and they can grow really well in pots as you as they grow yeah. bigger. You just plant them a little bit deeper and then they grow roots out the side. Which is so cool. Yeah, so when I you get it. like the suckers and then you can replant yeah. them again, that's something I learned from you. I never knew oh, really? I could do that. Oh, cool. And then I watched you do it in one of your videos and I was like, yeah. oh, I can have more tomatoes <laughs> without buying them. Yeah, tomatoes <laughs> are so great. And I feel like you just need one good plant yeah. and then save the seeds if you like the variety and then you have tomatoes forever. Yeah, so it's which so is cool. so wonderful, Yeah, isn't it? What else yeah. have you been planting? I have been planting, well, lots of flowers, really. Um, I'm just starting to get some zinnias in the ground. And this is all, I'm sowing all the seeds and starting them inside. Mm -hmm. The main reason for that is just with all of the rain that we're still getting, because we're kind of getting more of a wet spring again, which is unfortunate for the soil. How are you feeling about that? A little bit 
uh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm just kind of over it. But like I'm just I really don't even want to talk about the rain anymore. Yeah. I just I feel like every time someone asks me, oh, how's the garden going? I'm just saying, oh, yeah, it's really wet. And uh, that's the conversation. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited to just plant and just go ahead with it. I've built the beds up a little bit yeah. above the ground. So uh, they're hopefully the roots aren't going to get too They'll be too able wet. to drain. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but other than that, I've just, it's been a little bit of, of a slower start to spring, I feel. Uh, it's only just in the last few days. It's that, only just become spring. Though. I know that. <laughs> I know that. What, week one or two? <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. I need to remember that. But I, I feel like to. I'm like, naturally, my body is like, no, wait a little bit, like yeah. hold back a little bit, even though I feel like I should be doing things. And we always talk about yeah. this, like, oh, I feel so overwhelmed and whatever. I should be doing this. I should be doing that because mm. of like social media, seeing other people. But yeah. I think this time my body is really <laughs> like, no, just wait. You, When the time is right, we'll You'll plan know. more. Yeah. yeah. And that is, yeah. that's the toughest part about that transition from winter to the slight warm days of spring just before summer, because a lot of mm. plants do really well once it really starts to warm up and yeah. the days become so much longer, but that itch to just get things into the I ground, know. like after the cold winters and all the rains is, um, yeah, it's really tough to fight. Really, Yeah, it is, particularly with, with the weather. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I have noticed like a few little changes in, in nature and I was wondering if you've kind of noticed anything oh, yeah. like with flowers or birds or animals, do yeah. you notice like a change? Do you sense anything in your environment? Definitely. <laughs> like the amount of birds that we have coming into our gardens now is amazing. I almost yeah. forgot just how many we're visiting mm -hmm. and for a while I thought maybe our dogs were being too noisy or yeah. our cat was scaring <laughs> them away. But it really is just a seasonal thing that as yeah. soon as it warms up and the flowers start blooming, the population of birds just increases. So there's at least yeah. – there's all the um, – there's the bow birds, which mm -hmm. actually have been quite – a bit of a problem for us in our garden this really? season. Eating yeah. the leaves. And eating the leaves, eating yeah. the seedlings, uh, going and eating the chicken food. Oh, no. So we're essentially yes. feeding an army of birds every time oh, wow. that we're, we're feeding our chooks. Um, yeah. But, yeah, there's bowbirds, there's the lorikeets are back, the rosellas. There's just, yeah, Lots blue wrens as well. Mm. Yeah, it's been really stunning to listen to them in the mornings especially. Yeah. Um, but all the blooms, just noticing all the wild flowers. Um, there's yeah. so many varieties of flowers that I'm noticing popping up along the road on my way to work or mm -hmm. wherever I'm going that I've almost forgotten that bloom out there yeah but they true. do come year after year they self-seed yeah yeah when we were driving down I noticed all of um like the pea flowers the yeah. yellow ones I think they're commonly called like eggs and bacon flowers are they those really tall ones they're kind of like medium like kind of our height like I don't know or up <laughs> to up to like two meters or so that's pretty tall <laughs> you know but yeah probably probably tall then um yeah. but yeah they were so bright and like yeah. vibrant along along the sides of the road those are the exact same flowers yeah, that I was just then. talking about that yeah. I forgot that they come up because yeah. I hadn't seen them in so long yeah and they do just signify that change of season and the beginning of spring the same way that tulips mm. or daffodils might as well yeah um and I know that both of us planted daffodils, tulips, and yes. other bulbs um, yeah, over yours winter look time. Amazing. Oh, so pretty! They're so <laughs> nice, and the smell that comes off them yeah. is incredible. I I try and go over there every single morning just so that I can enjoy it before my day starts. Yeah, well, it's good because it's like you know near your driveway, and then you'd see it every day. Exactly, all of the beautiful flowers, and see yeah. how it changes because each mm. day or each week a different flower will bloom. And I'm sure if I'm seeing that in this little square of garden beds that I have with my flowers, I can only imagine the beauty that you're experiencing yeah. with your little cottage garden. Yeah, it's very pretty right now. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of flowers. There's lots of um, ranunculus. I feel like I talk about it in every single one of my YouTube videos. As you but should. I just they're beautiful. I know. They're so pretty. And I just love learning about like all the different flowers that are blooming and yeah. and also, yeah, the native flowers around here because we this is our first spring here, really mm -hmm. down on the south coast of New South Wales. And 
Like I love being in tune with nature and kind of just, you know, you just get that feeling that there's a shift in the seasons. And I've really been feeling that the last few days, just with like the extended sunlight hours, like you get a few more sunsets now. And I feel like in winter, it was just the sun would go down so quickly that you wouldn't really get the sunsets. Yeah, but I saw some color. you're getting some really stunning ones around you. Yeah, Yeah. I've seen, started to notice it a bit more. I'm sure it happened, you know, the past few weeks or so, but. When you start to notice these things, spring is here. So, yeah, yeah, and that's so wonderful. Mm. What else have you been noticing? Have you been noticing anything different with your mood or your outlook um, or yeah. your interactions with being outside? Because I know over winter time you spoke about it being a little bit more um, demotivating. Is that the right word yeah. to go outside? Yeah, well, it was harder, um, harder to kind of get yourself up earlier and get outside um and be productive and not have to wear like three layers (laughs) but yeah I think well even this morning I went outside and I it didn't feel like a chore or anything I really enjoyed being out there and I was just like in a t-shirt doing a few chores that's so good yeah but it just felt like it was cool but not uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and that's what I really like about spring and autumn they're probably like my two favorite (laughs) seasons just to get um like out of the extremes of the heat and cold yeah but yeah that's probably been making my mood change a little bit like I just feel a little bit more relaxed um out in nature yeah Yeah. because I can kind of just yeah notice the change and have a little bit more daylight Mm -hmm. to enjoy all of the different animals and I heard like crickets the other night and I haven't heard them in a while yeah I don't know whether it was because of the rain or just it's kind of the days are a bit longer and it's warming up but doesn't it make you think like where do like I know the birds fly away to warmer places but like where do the bugs go I know do they just like dig underground yeah I think so I think a lot of them like they hibernate well I don't really know. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, how can you not hear them? Can someone help us with that one? But um, I know a lot the of like the larva, the larvae, they kind of, you know, lay or the insects lay their eggs and stuff like that. So the maybe gas. they lay their help eggs us. and their eggs just kind of rest over that period of time and the adults. Know. Yeah, we'll Does have to do not? our research on yeah, that. Yeah, sounds like a gap in our knowledge, but yeah. it's just so interesting. Like you yeah. wouldn't, you don't think about those things until you really stop and go, oh, this sound that I used to hear all the time isn't there mm-hmm. anymore. This animal can't fly or travel long distances. Yeah. So where is it? Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. I wanted to go <laughs> back to, um, you said before that you find it a lot more relaxing to be outside and now that the days are longer you're finding that you're out there for longer periods of time as well do you find that you're more of like a morning garden person or an afternoon garden person or are you most motivated to do whatever you can in the middle of the day like when is your perfect time to garden that's a good question I think at the moment I really like my slow mornings Mm -hmm. so I like to go outside but I'm not really doing jobs I'm more so like you know if I see a weed or whatever I'll just pick it out but Mm. and you know turn the compost and that kind of thing but I think afternoons is right now when I enjoy being out there just because it's still kind of cool and there's not as many bugs as there are in summer and uh, I'm not not looking forward to to the flies or the mosquitoes or anything like that Mm. but um yeah I really like slow mornings I don't do too much in the middle of the day um just mainly like computer work and then in the afternoons is when I prefer to um yeah get outside or what about you Uh, when do you prefer because I know you're still you work full-time as well so but but as you said I'm now that the days and the mornings are so much longer I mean there's daylight from about 5 30 in the morning Mm. until I head off to work at eight so now that it's not only warmer but it's lit up for a lot longer in the morning I'm able to get outside in the morning and do as much as I can before heading off to work and I really love taking advantage of that Mm -hmm. because one thing that I've really missed since taking up full-time work as a teacher up here is I've missed just being outside in my garden walking Mm -hmm. around like you just picking weeds or just noticing things that are growing seedlings popping up all of those like little moments that I don't get to experience when I go to work. Um, Yeah. I've finally been able to get those back and it's been a really nice feeling. 
Mm -hmm. I'm also preparing myself knowing that summer is brutally hot Mm -hmm. during the daytime and just kind of training myself up to be outside in the morning, doing as much as I can, whether it's just shoveling a bit of mulch onto the garden beds or the pathways. Um, And then, yeah, Mm. usually during the weekends, I'll... I'll be outside in the garden from about 7 a.m. in the morning. Like as soon as I've had my coffee, I'll head outside and then I'll Mm. keep at it, keep finding tasks and things to do up until maybe midday, one o'clock. That's usually like my stopping point. I've had enough and I need to just come in and chill. Yeah, Yeah. that's really cool. Just before we uh, move on, let's acknowledge the fact that Filming with animals is at times quite challenging. They like to press buttons on laptops. They like to bark when it's not time to um, and sometimes jump the fence to come over and say hi. Yep, real life here. (laughs) Yes, that's it. (laughs) So the last thing we talked about, I think, was just being able to take advantage of the mornings um, and just feeling like we have that bit more time before work or before we do tasks. I mean, yeah, you guys seem super busy though. Like I'm really interested. I mean, you've got like the garden, animals, dogs, cats. <laughs> you were maybe talking about adding animals to, oh, yeah. to Always. the homestead. <laughs> um, how do you like, is there anything that you do before like the busy season? Like spring is super busy. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got lambs that might be coming and everything, fingers crossed. <laughs> is there anything that you guys do to kind of reset before the busy season or or can you manage or are we stress busy all year round yeah like what do you do to manage the stress because I mean I would be stressed if I was in your position yeah I mean but. I get what you mean that it seems like there's a lot going on and it's busy all the time or at least at this time of the year when things mm. really like ramp up again but a lot of our animal systems work together or cool. work in ways to make other things easier so for example At the moment with spring coming back, um, with the sun shining more, with the rain still coming down hard, the Mm. grass is going to start becoming prolific. It's going to start growing really fast. And so by having a flock of sheep, we're removing that need to whip a snip or mow the lawn because they're moving around and grazing it down for us. Yeah. And, And sheep don't need a lot of work or effort or like you don't need to be moving them time and time again. They're happy where they are. They love just grazing on grass and um, it's not like chickens where you have to go outside every single day and feed them and lock them up and unlock them and all those things. Um, So they're pretty manageable. As far as chickens go though, we're about to get our meat chickens um, as well as we've got a chicken trying to hatch some baby chicks for our egg layers as well. So that I am feeling a little bit nervous about with how it's going to fit around everything else we have going Mm. but then I have to think back that you know we've managed in the past and we've survived even though it was our first year of raising those types of animals Um, Mm. so over winter time things really do chill out and although we find things to do and we try to stay on top of things we try to do more of the building side of things on the homestead yeah So when we're getting all of these new animals, we're already ahead of the game because we've got the coop set up for them and we've got the brooders set up for them and any other infrastructure that that we need. And then year after year, it becomes easier because those things are already there and all we need to do is bring the animals back. So, yeah, winter's been a pretty relaxed kind of um, season for us. So it's allowed us to kind of catch our breath and then look forward to the busyness of spring and summer again. Yeah, that's good. Um, And I'm really hoping that this spring and summer time for us especially is going to be even busier. Like I really want to plant so much more so that come summertime I can start preserving some of it Mm. um, or I don't know, just experiment more with being able to turn, let's say fruit into um, pies or into jams, uh, which is something that I've never gotten to experience before. Yeah, cool. How, How do you go with preserving, I wonder? Yeah, I would love to learn more. Like I really haven't done much. Much. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like with the living in Queensland and northern Queensland, preserving was always just a little bit hard sometimes because the way I would usually do it was just freeze things mm-hmm. and not to make too many 
jams and other things just because sometimes we didn't have the right storage, like a dry, cool pantry or yeah. anything like that. I feel like there's probably a little bit more opportunities down here to do it or I just probably didn't learn how to properly preserve well, up it's north. it's intimidating. It, yeah, it is. I, I'm actually – like really scared about preserving and canning things that I know a lot of other people are yeah which is what kind of holds people back from preserving what worries you well just the whole process of making sure that you're sealing it properly mm -hmm. so whether it's things like you know tomato sauce uh, that you know you're storing for up to a year or so I just I'm not there yet with knowing exactly what to do basically mm -hmm. yeah and how what kind of jars to use um, making sure that they're sterilized properly, yeah, all that, yeah. Because the consequence of it is that it gets mold, and that can be really, really devastating when you've put a lot of hard work and time into growing that food, to mm. then like seal it and not properly seal it, or to have that little bit of yeah. whatever inside that produces the mold or that encourages it to grow. Mm. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see that being the thing to stop you but freezing food is a fantastic way yeah, to preserve I do it that a lot yeah. yeah i still have corn from the summer and yeah it's so nice yeah just to have your own produce it's yeah. so good i just need a bigger freezer though <laughs> and that's always the challenge yeah. we've got three chest freezers and a small yeah. freezer and we still feel like we don't have oh, enough wow. <laughs> oh so good yeah yeah but i think also just we we don't grow enough of one thing yeah. to preserve it I think if I was going more down the food preservation route, I would really think about what I'm growing and maybe just grow less of the different varieties. Mm -hmm. Like, and then one year, you know, grow more of something else and then change it up the next year yeah. to then build up my supplies of whatever I'm freezing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Which that, that is a really good place to then like move into this next yeah. topic that I want to talk about yeah. and to be able to preserve in summer and to have that abundance to be able to preserve as much as you can. I mean, there's some people yeah. out there that are literally putting away food for a year's worth for their families of who knows, like seven kids or more. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I that's amazing. That. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. But um, with us, it's just Sam and I. So we really have to think about what kind of food do we actually eat and how do we eat it? Because we love green beans, but we love them fresh. We don't yeah. so much like the canned variety of them. Um, and right now in springtime is the time to start thinking about what am I going to plant in my garden beds so that come summertime and the end of springtime, um, I actually have the produce that I want to not only be eating fresh, but be able to put away uh, yeah. for later. So what kinds of things are you starting to plant into your garden beds now? What are the crops that you want to have an abundance of come summertime. I know flowers is one thing, yeah. but as far as vegetables go. Yeah, well, I think I've got to think about firstly, like how to stagger the planting and because okay. we can't plant, or at least where I am, it planting everything that, you, that it says you can plant in spring isn't appropriate for us. Like planting pumpkins, it's probably a little bit too mm -hmm. cool for that. Same with watermelons and um, like other melons. But definitely I'd really like to try some of the bigger tomatoes and freeze a yeah. lot of those. I just love having a bunch of frozen tomatoes in the freezer. Interesting. How do you use those? My favorite thing is like my favorite meal ever is just like a summer pasta where you just like grab a bunch of either fresh or frozen tomatoes, roast them with like capsicums and onion um, and then just like chuck it in pasta with whatever yeah. fresh veggies you have. And just with olive oil, it's just amazing with like a bit of garlic, salt and pepper. Do they retain favorite. their texture, the tomatoes? Not quite the texture, but I mean, when they're roasted, I kind of just like smash them all mm. up and oh, it's just so delicious. Yum. So I really want to have a lot of those. So I'd like to yeah plant a lot of those. Um, what kind of varieties of tomatoes are you planting or are you mm. just planting anything that says large <laughs> variety? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to, I mean, I've never grown a lot of the larger varieties. And I think I've said this in another episode that it was quite hard in yeah. the subtropics to grow bigger varieties. So like fruit flies. Yeah, yeah, and all of the different bugs. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to grow just a lot of Roma tomatoes. I really mm -hmm. like them. Um, I'm trying a few beef steaks and there is one variety that I never know how to pronounce it but it's I think it's gross lease 
cress liz don't look at me i don't yeah, know how it's, to pronounce it's anything. kind of a medium tomato but okay. it's really delicious and i really love the yellow varieties mm-hmm. i think they're really nice and sweet and they're really nice roasted yeah um yeah i feel like <laughs> it's literally yeah, a bow bird okay. speak of the devil <laughs> Uh, but other than that, like a lot of herbs, mm-hmm. I really want to get into preserving herbs yeah. because we use them like in every meal, basically. So I think I'd like to dry some of those, mm-hmm. maybe get a dehydrator. Do you have one of those? No, what? I've no? been really wanting to make one, like mm-hmm. a solar dehydrator. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be amazing. Uh, or even just be able to weave like baskets. Yeah. You know how they've got the bamboo baskets and you can dry on them, yeah. but be able to weave them out of native grass because we've got That'd so much cool. of it. Yeah. I know it's just a project that I have in mind that I want to do and then I never find the time for. Yeah. So I'm kind of waiting for the school holidays to start those kinds of projects Uh, but dehydrating herbs is such a great way to use them and be able to use them year round yeah yeah I used to actually when we had um, when we lived with family they had an air fryer and we would use the air fryer Mm -hmm. to dehydrate them interesting yeah it was so quick to do like you just do it in like 10 minutes or so uh, and you can just dehydrate like bulk herbs it was amazing yeah yeah fantastic what's your favorite herb to dehydrate or to preserve? Um, probably parsley. Okay. Yeah. Like I freeze that as well as dry that just because mm-hmm. that's probably the herb that we eat the most of yeah. and just tastes amazing in like summer dishes and winter dishes. Yeah, I don't, I I don't take lot. advantage of parsley oh, enough. Really? Yeah, yeah, it hasn't it. really grown in my garden for me to be able to use. Mm. So, I mean, if you're growing in abundance, you're naturally going to use more of it. True. Yeah. yeah. While yeah. cilantro or coriander grows really well mm. in our garden, so that's something that we preserve and use a lot more. And I love yeah. making pesto yeah. out of it, which I is really made delicious. pesto out of that. Yeah, I should try yeah. that. You can make pesto yeah. out of anything that's green, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do always add spinach in yeah. to like the basil pesto. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. I've heard of people using the tops of um, onions and garlics as well. Yeah. I used yeah. the, what are they called? Garlic scapes. Scapes, one time. yeah. Yeah, I added one or two of them in. They're really nice. Well, there you go. Anything yeah. that's green, turn it into a pesto. Exactly. With any type of... Um, oily nut because you don't have to use pine nuts because for me pine nuts are really um overwhelming in flavor so i prefer to use uh cashews or walnuts instead yeah nice sorry i've taken us away off track i'm excited for pesto i know i'm excited (laughs) for food yeah so much food (laughs) because one thing that um since starting to grow our own food and having our own gardens i really struggle with going to a market or a supermarket and buying something that's out of season i still do because i love eating tomatoes year round or cucumbers cucumbers year round but they don't taste quite the same until summertime and even just shopping at farmers markets has really taught me the power of eating seasonally and right now we have an abundance of pumpkins from the growing season we have Mm. green beans still in the fridge we have sweet potatoes and potatoes and it's been really cool to try learn how to use those ingredients as opposed to using tomatoes and cucumbers which aren't in season Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to summer fruit and veggies again yeah for sure yeah definitely I've been planting um, originally when I planned out our garden beds I thought that I would be planting a lot of corn pumpkins and beans Mm -hmm. and now that I've thought about it Last season, Sam and I hardly ate any corn. A lot yeah. of it went to waste. Um, with all the rains that we got, a lot of it didn't really get properly pollinated because yeah, okay. it's um, pollinated by the wind. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thinking this season, instead of growing too much corn or corn that might not be successful, especially if we have a wet season coming up again, I'm definitely planting a lot more tomatoes, zucchini, yeah cucumbers and I'm going to take advantage of preserving the zucchini yeah. whether it's um whether it's shredding it and freezing it as mm. shredded zucchini or whether I start to bake it into things like brownies mm. or cakes and loaves and freezing it that way mm. I'm I'm just really looking forward to growing things that I know I love to eat in abundance and are things yeah. that are really versatile as well yeah yeah I think that's important to kind yeah. of remember because Spring is so overwhelming with all of the seeds, and, or at least, you know, we all know my seed 
stash is overwhelming. But yeah, I think just remembering like what you really want to grow, what you eat and yeah. a way you can do that is just looking at your pantry Just or go in, have a look in your fridge and see what's in there and yeah. see if you can grow it or not. Yeah. Um, so what kind yeah. of things do you eat the most that you could potentially grow like if someone out there was starting a garden for the first time and trying to think of what exactly is easy enough to grow that they eat what would you Mm. recommend because I mean tomatoes we both are raving about tomatoes tomatoes, but there's other things out there (laughs) there are (laughs) yeah Yeah. Uh, honestly like carrots I think are some of the coolest plants to grow they're just is so amazing how that tiny little seed can grow into something just so delicious and homemade carrots just taste homemade so homegrown (laughs) homegrown carrots taste so different yeah. I think and I think anything that really like touches the soil like a root vegetable yeah. um, you can really notice the difference in taste yeah. um, if it's you know not organic from the supermarket versus organically grown I completely agree potatoes yeah. when I'm Definitely. finally having to buy potatoes from the store it is mm. miles behind what I can grow in my garden yeah it's they're devastating. so creamy that yes. you can grow yeah but yeah, carrots, I think um, cucumbers is another one that yeah. I'm super excited for. Uh, hopefully, like with all of the rain, it won't be too bad. Last um, season was a bit challenging with cucumbers. I think I had one plant yeah. that successfully grew maybe 10 cucumbers yeah. um, and then the rest didn't grow. Celery, I was going to say yeah, that celery, yeah. you recently yeah. planted that. Yeah, yeah, I grew um, a lot of things I've actually planted in winter and they've kind of overwintered and now they're starting to grow again. So celery was one of those that um, I planted as tiny little seedlings and it was really slow to grow Mm -hmm. and now it's just like exploded with growth. Yeah, so it was really cool to kind of just not even have to worry about some things. They just grew themselves and yeah, um, they've like really taken off now. Same with a lot of our fruit trees. I was Mm -hmm. really worried that some of them would you know not grow but because they looked a little bit like they were out the door didn't they they had uh, is that the ones you're talking about the, the ones tiny that, ones the moss yeah they they won't survive but oh, okay. <laughs> more of <laughs> like ones. all of the little ones that we planted they were just sitting there like dormant all the the fajoa trees yeah um and now i've seen all little like shoots on them which is exciting that's wonderful yeah so i think um yeah it was a little bit disheartening to just see a lot of things not grow but now now they're all taking off which yeah. is really cool and I feel like a lot of seeds that maybe have fallen into the garden might self-sow because I'm there are so that many things well. that self-sow yeah. yeah especially tomatoes tomatoes are notorious yeah. and pumpkins as well for just growing in random places and yeah. volunteering in different spots in your garden that you didn't even realize they could get to yeah so like I'm hoping that there's just going to be tomatoes everywhere yeah, I feel like the compost is, you know, we always come back to compost, but like it's so interesting to see if it's an open pile, like mm-hmm. what things are germinating because yeah. they'll naturally germinate at the right time. Mm-hmm. And then you often have like the best pumpkins and tomatoes out of the compost bin. Yeah, well, they're opinion. so full of nutrition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much nitrogen and as things start breaking down, I'm sure there's even more minerals in there for the pumpkins and the tomatoes to really thrive from. Yeah, yeah. I was going to come back to celery as well. Celery is one of those great plants similar to lettuce and leeks as well that when you go to harvest them, instead of pulling out the whole plant, you just Mm. cut them at the base Mm -hmm. and leave the bottom because they will start growing again from that spot. And I've noticed that with some of my leeks that I've had growing since last season because I've neglected them. (laughs) And I finally have started to cut them back and use them in our cooking. And now they're growing back from that same spot. Yeah, that's so And I recently, I was um, researching more about soil and soil health, especially coming into spring. And I was listening to the power of plants and roots really being able to go deeper into the soil than what us gardeners are letting them do. So there's a huge advantage in being able to leave your plants and let their roots go deeper than you thought they could so whether that's things like leeks um, or your root vegetables kind of just letting them be in there because Mm. they'll dig deeper into the soil and be able to reach nutrients that otherwise you wouldn't have known are there in your soil and start to bring it up Mm. but then they also create pockets so that all of your other plants can then reach deeper as well with their roots and be able to access all that too 
Yeah, that's so, so cool. So amazing yeah. how nature just works together. I feel like that yeah. also happens, yeah, in nature. Out as it well, does. when the plants start to grow again, they all work together. Yeah. And, yeah. Which is why there's an advantage of having trees planted alongside shrubs and ground covers. They all work mm. together and dig deeper into the soil. And if we as gardeners are coming through and tilling all that and starting fresh every single time, we're only really using the very top of the soil bank as opposed yeah. to really letting our plants dig deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually came across that information in those videos after starting to amend my soil and add nutrients because a lot mm-hmm. of these videos were saying, no, you shouldn't have to add things into your soil. It's all there within the soil. You just need to give your plants a chance to access it. Yeah, and I cool. was like, oh my gosh, what yeah, do you mean? I've been doing amazing. it wrong this whole time. But I mean, if if you're taught or you see one way, then you wouldn't ever question it because mm-hmm. it's working. Mm-hmm. But if you don't try out like the deeper, slower method of letting plants just sit in the ground and root down below the soil you wouldn't know that that could be beneficial too. So I'm I'm curious to see what happens with my leek plant if I just leave it forever. Yeah. We'll Will have to do a forever? check-in on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my Brussels sprouts as well. Will they grow into a tree? Yeah. Turn into perennials. <laughs> Maybe. Because I, I wonder if most plants were perennials once upon a time in their life in some form and we've just manipulated them or disadvantaged them to a point where they can only be annuals. Yeah. I and I mean, seasons are going to seasons are going to put an end to certain plants, anyways, like tomatoes and things like that. But your hardy, strong plants like leeks and celery and herbs, will they be able to outlast the weather if mm. you just give them that starting chance of digging their roots deeper into the soil? Yeah, I'd love to just have like a little patch where I experiment in that yeah. way and just let We've everything got grow. Room. I do. I really do. I have a whole field of grass. Exactly. <laughs> that I can cover up and turn into gardens if I need to. Yeah, cool. So have you ever had a season where you've planted too much of something (laughs) and then had to harvest it all in one go or maybe you just didn't have the time to harvest it and then it all went away? Yeah, I mean, I've also had, I've had that problem, but more so I've had the problem of where I'm starting too many seedlings Mm -hmm. and I don't have the space as well. Like I haven't properly thought about how much I really need in terms of seedlings and they don't end up even making it into the ground. Yeah. So what do you do to, what are you going to be doing to combat that? Well, I think I need to do a little bit more work on succession sowing yeah, and really which you mentioned before. So. Yeah, so just kind of um, doing a little bit more research about the climate first, just to know mm-hmm. what I should be planting from early spring to late spring because they are very different yeah. with their temperatures yeah, and especially for the flowers. Sunlight. Yeah. yeah, true. Um, there's a, f- a few different varieties that are really great with succession sowing. So a few of these are like lettuce and carrots. Um, mm-hmm. Potatoes, probably not mm, so because you've got to do so much work to like prep them and grow them. Um, Just well, dig a hole, put them in. Oh, well, yeah, true. Yeah, true. <laughs> Depending on how you're doing it. Yeah. But in terms of like space and sometimes it's easier to just plant them all in one go. But I did find that uh, there's a few plants that you really don't need to plant a lot of to have a lot of produce. Like last season, I planted maybe like three plants of cucumbers Mm -hmm. and I had so many cucumbers, I had no idea what to do with them. And they're one of those things that you can't really freeze either or preserve them. them. I mean, you can make pickles. Which we were totally over pickles. So, yeah. (laughs) Um, I think there are like just planning the area better I need to do Mm -hmm. this this year so figuring out how big things grow and then if I'm going to succession so like carrots just making sure that I have spaces for them same with lettuce and other greens uh, which are great to do because I feel like uh, in most places you can have greens all year round um, depending on what type of variety you grow but I would really like to every few weeks just have like a tick or um, like a board on the on the fridge that I can just like make sure I'm succession sowing different food that's a Um, good idea yeah so that I just remember like every uh, few weeks or every few weekends I'm just adding a few more seeds in the ground yeah Um, because we do like eat a lot of greens and a lot of carrots and um, we have a lot of onions planted but I think just figuring out what we're eating most of is important 
And that's you can also do that really su- uh, successfully with broccoli and yeah. cauliflower because they are one of those things where they're really nice fresh in a lot of recipes. And so being able to have a broccoli head or cauliflower as long as everything goes well and your yeah. sheep don't eat it, but <laughs> <laughs> having a broccoli head like once a week or every few weeks you plant the next lot of broccoli heads so that they come up at different points and you're not overwhelmed by just one plant yeah yeah because some plants it's really great to be able to plant an abundance of them all in one go like if you're going to preserve tomatoes into tomato sauce it is in your best interest to plant lots of tomato plants together And similarly, if you're going to just freeze your beans, it really doesn't matter when you're going to have them. Mm. But if you're eating your beans fresh and you have, let's say, 50 plants all over the place, all growing at the same times, you're inevitably going to miss a a bean plant uh, or a a fruit, a bean. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And if you miss it, it's going to grow really big. And as soon as it goes into its seed form, that plant begins to terminate itself. And same thing with zucchini, cucumber, pumpkins. As soon as you let them get to the stage where they're forming their seeds and like they've completed their life cycle as such. Yeah. You're not going to get any fresh fruit from them, or at least you'll only get a little bit more before that's the end of that so it really is in your best interest to plant a few plants at a time and then plant some more next yeah and then particularly if you've got a smaller space as well like I mean we have the luxury of a really big area but Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people grow on balconies and I mean I used to have like a container little garden which was really great um but yeah I really then had to figure out what I wanted to grow and what I could physically eat um And yeah, things like carrots were really great to grow in pots, Mm -hmm. same with herbs and lettuce and even some natives as well. I was growing like a lot of um, warrigal greens, like a native spinach. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are a lot of other native varieties that are uh, now is the time to plant them Mm -hmm. in spring. Um, Lots of native herbs and things like that. So yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to getting back into my food forest. Um, Mm. Some of the plants overwintered okay. And then other plants just look a little bit battered. So I'm looking forward to getting back in there and just kind of adding some more mulch around the trees, Mm. getting the weeds back um, and then planting some more ground covers so that the natives start to overtake all of the introduced species. But yeah, yeah, that's probably a good thing to get some more ground covers in now yeah. because the weeds are also going to start popping up a lot more with the yeah, weather warming course. up and making sure that any like bare ground is covered with mulch is probably something that yeah. I'm remembering now I need to do and just to make sure that everything's nice and covered because the grass is just going to overtake everything. And I think that's what makes things overwhelming in spring and summer is that grass because it does go from nothing to 100 so quickly. But yes, yes, even though the grasses can be overwhelming in springtime and I know that mixing in the planting seeds, the harvesting Uh, fruit and vegetables, suppressing the weeds and then putting mulch on top too. Mm -hmm. I can feel the overwhelm coming, but it's still an exciting time. We'll keep trying to get ahead as much as we can and I think it will be a great season. Yeah, I think it's overall generally pretty exciting. Like I am very excited for what is to come and and learn how to grow in this new environment. Me too. uh, yeah, follow along with like what you're doing as well. And hopefully we can kind of share we produce and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I think um, yeah, it'll be really fun. Yeah, so thanks again for a lovely conversation. Yeah. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's chat and podcast as well. Please remember to leave us a review. Although I haven't quite figured out where to leave a review <laughs> for podcasts. Yeah, so. I think it's different on any <laughs> app. So whatever <laughs> app you're using... Look into the review section and okay. uh, we'll we'll have a look at that as well. We'll try, try and figure it out, it out well. for next time. <laughs> yeah, but YouTube is always, yeah. there is this YouTube channel, um, which we, we film. So for those listening on podcast apps, we do have the visual version as well. Mm-hmm. If you would like to, to watch that on the Earthly Roots podcast YouTube channel. Yep. And we've been posting a lot of um, shorts as well so that you can kind of get a snippet and an idea of what an episode is going to be like yep. um, so that you know whether you want to commit the 40 minutes yep. straight away yep <laughs> which we know you do exactly we have great <laughs> conversations <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much for listening. This was a really cool chat. And let us know what you are up to for spring as well and any feedback that you might have mm-hmm. over on our Instagram page as well. That will be really cool to see. Yeah. All right. Well, see you guys next time. See, ya. see you guys next time. <laughs> oh, God. I'm such a bad. We could fade out on that. <laughs>